Hi there. So I made a video recently where I was uh, discussing the merits of shotguns for home defense. And you don't really get to make a video where you discuss the merits of something for home defense without discussing what your home defense solution is. And so today I wanted to go through a series of techniques that I use in my home defense situation that I think a lot of people would do really well to learn. That is offhanded flashlight. Um, essentially offhand meaning you are using one hand on the gun and a separate hand is holding a flashlight. The compromises of apartment living and very few jokes about one-handed happiness. M maybe just the one. Honestly, I'm not even sure I'm going to do the one. I, I wanted to title this The Stranger, and apparently nobody got that joke. So all you get now is this reference. Really quick, we should discuss why would anyone choose this on purpose. It's worth acknowledging that all defensive situations are compromises. Nobody actually wants to be defending themselves. Your perfect situation would be that no one who could ever harm you would ever be anywhere near you. Nobody gets that. We all have to compromise and find ways to deal with whatever our situation requires. In my case, I have roommates. I have friends that might be staying over at random periods of time. I have a partner who might have friends staying over at random periods of time. And all of that makes home defense complicated. Keeping friends and family alive should always be the goal, though. I don't think that part should be really debatable. And one of the rules of gun safety, in fact, one of the first rules of gun safety that I teach ever is don't point the gun at anything you don't intend to kill. Seems fairly obvious, but then if you have, say, a shotgun or a long arm and you're using that for home defense, you don't have a third hand to hold a flashlight with. The only way you can get a light source on something you need to illuminate is by pointing the gun at the thing you need to illuminate. Except if it turns out it wasn't somebody who was a threat, you just pointed a gun at a friendly. That is really bad. The first rule of gun safety is you only point your gun at things you intend to kill. So if you have, say, a roommate situation, you might not be able to just use a long arm. Now, before we even get into the good parts of this, I do want to start off with this, the problems here, because first of all, with a handgun, two noodles would be better than one. And what I mean is you are controlling a long arm with your entire body, but when you try to control a pistol, you are limited to the two noodles on the sides of your body. However, when you are using these techniques, they're kind of starting off by taking one of those noodles out you're you're only using the one most handgun techniques it is better to have at least both noodles it's also worth pointing out that this isn't just one technique it's kind of a series of techniques for different situations so you need to not just be practicing one skill it's also worth pointing out that caliber there are a lot of myths when it comes to caliber, but it is absolutely worth pointing out that even 9mm can be a little bit of a handful if you're shooting one-handed. Um, in many cases, including in my own personal choice, I have I am currently using a 380 in a full-size gun entirely because I want to have as little recoil as possible because I'm going to be working it one-handed. This is a compromise many are not willing to make, and it's one you have to think through. And I am not sitting here saying having a light attached to your gun is inherently bad. But I am saying that for a lot of people, that isn't going to be as effective a solution as you might be thinking. Because I know a lot of people, I always hear the argument of people saying, oh, I can just bounce the light. You know, why, why, why would you use a, a separate light? You can just bounce it. Well, I want to introduce you to Tim Noble and Sue Webster. And these are two artists who have mastered using shadows to create new forms of art. They use garbage sculptures and then cast light through them, but by having them in the exact right position, the shadows produce wildly different images than what the things they're made of would imply the shadow should make. Remember, you're talking about split-second decisions where fractions of a second can absolutely matter and you're trusting your decision making to something that is casting shadows these objects are not 
even vaguely the shadows that they cast. And that's kind of the entire point of their work. Or for another example, it has to deal with less with arranging into new shapes and more with having a, a, a cast shadow change its shape. There's Vincent Ball, who does these really fantastic illustrations entirely around a strong shadow being cast and creating a, an entire new shape. This is the reason why I do not want anyone to trust uh, uh, bouncing a light to be the solution for making sure they have enough light in a situation. That's not how our brains work. We, we are designed to find patterns where there aren't any, rather than guarantee find every pattern, even if there is zero. It's also worth pointing out a lot of this information is going to be coming from a problematic source. A lot of the people who have had to walk around with firearms using flashlights are the police. A lot of the techniques that were developed here were developed by people who were thinking uh, in, in terms of police investigating a scene. And I don't want you to think that means you are police or that you have the same level of capability or even that you're in the same situations. But... You can learn from those who have knowledge, not just those who you agree with or like or even think are good people. And perhaps most importantly in all of this, I need to highlight, nobody rises to the occasion. You merely fall back on your training. So all of this is going to be completely worthless if you don't go out and practice it a lot. This is not learning is the end. This is learning is the beginning of your practice. But in order to teach these techniques, we kind of have to go back to World War II, because back then, the common pistol technique that was taught in multiple branches and by multiple fighting forces was using one hand. This is actually still the basis of where one of the major forms of using a flashlight one-handed comes from. Because the reason this was taught is that one-handed position has the force go in a way that goes you are still controlling the force the entire time you are directing the energy of the recoil into the ground through your body and it gives a surprising amount of control so you can take that same shape and apply it to a one-handed flashlight technique and you are still able to point the flashlight effectively and importantly while you are walking around you can have the gun be lowered, which means that the flashlight is the thing that you are pointing at in order to identify a target. It prevents you from pointing the gun at something that isn't a target. However, let's talk about what happens when you shoot two-handed. Because normally when you shoot two-handed, the recoil is being mitigated by both of your arms. If, you, if the gun is at all in front of you, you are usually compensating with the left arm pulling left and the right arm pulling right. It's just how our body naturally assumes the force of recoil control. When you only have one arm in this position, your recoil is inherently going to push towards the arm that you just removed. It's not just going to go perfectly back anymore. It's going to go back and left in this case. Which ends up meaning one of the options for shooting one-handed from this position is actually to cant the firearm. Essentially what you are doing is lining the firearm up with the angle of recoil. You are making it so the recoil is feeding back into your body appropriately. You are, it is still controlling twice as much force with one arm, but at bare minimum, it is controlling it in the direction you're hoping it for. And that leads to the first technique I'm going to teach you called crossed support. Crossed support essentially works by taking that cant and the natural position that your hand goes in when you are using a flashlight now you have to practice this a bit as you are essentially using an arm to control recoil at an angle, but this also allows for a very natural transition. It works really well from 10 to 15 feet. This, however, is not to be confused with a similar technique that you will see more commonly taught. This is called the Harry's technique. And the reason why this is more commonly taught is because it keeps your sights aligned. However, it's also a bit awkward to teach because instead of uh, 
one arm shooting and one arm uh, uh, pushing at where the known recoil line is going to be. You essentially keep your arms constantly in tension. Your left, uh, your left arm, the one with the flashlight, is constantly pushing up and left while your gun hand is constantly pushing down and right. Now, you'll notice by doing this, you are automatically pushing against the direction the recoil is going to be taking. This also means that you can keep the sights level. However, there is a significant problem with this that a lot of people don't realize. It has a, a bit of a safety issue. Whereas when you are doing the cross support technique, you are canting the sights and inherently making your job a little bit more difficult. You, it's something you can train around, but it's definitely something you have to practice. However, the Harry's technique has a significant safety problem. When you have your flashlight and are moving around, you will inevitably need to transition to having the flashlight on the other side of the gun. And that can lead to a point where you are, because you are moving quickly, you will flag yourself and have the gun pointed at your arm in an effort to try and get the flashlight onto the supporting side. So while this, it, it can work in certain circumstances, you really need to practice your transitions. And given how weird and messy fights frequently are, I do not recommend practicing this as your main technique. There is also a technique referred to as the Rogers technique. This is uh, also going by the name of the Surefire technique, because Surefire has an entire line of flashlights dedicating to making this technique as easy as possible. Now, the reason those flashlights help is because, on the one hand, you kind of mangle your fingers when you're doing this. You have to hold the flashlight between your first and second finger and then aim the gun somewhat normally. And at first, this will feel somewhat awkward. And on top of that, you have to get used to walking around uh, looking at uh, if you are using your gun to check out a threat, you have to have your flashlight in this slightly awkward position between your first and second fingers. However, it is very much worth noting that that Rogers technique is the closest you will get to having a normal shooting position when you go to shoot. That in and of itself is worth something. This is the closest you will get to feeling like you just are walking with a handgun. And last, I want to touch on something referred to as the FBI technique. Now, the FBI technique has you hold the flashlight way the hell out. And the reason for this is because the FBI has noticed when they go investigating and they are expecting a armed force, the, the person, if you are using a flashlight to look, the person who will be shooting at you is not going to shoot at you. They're going to shoot at your flashlight. Now, the FBI technique also has the gun holstered, although you will also see people doing it with the gun held at strong side out of holster. Um, essentially, you are assuming there is you, you want to have as minimally invasive a uh, impact as possible. And having the flashlight out and the gun kind of away from it means there's a non-zero chance if you bump into somebody who's drunk or lost or not supposed to be there but not a threat they don't there's a good chance in the dark they won't even see that you have a handgun which is in and of itself a form of de-escalation that said the fbi technique also pushes people towards a form of point shooting uh and i think it's kind of an older technique it's one of those things that's useful for certain moments but you should definitely have it kind of as one of a number of techniques rather than the thing that you rely on. That is going to be it for me, though. Thank you all for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you want to support me directly, I'm over on Patreon. That is absolutely the best way to make sure this content gets to continue moving forward. But other than that, that's going to be it for me. Stay dangerous, y'all. Keep each other safe. And remember, moral doesn't mean legal, and Stonewall was a fucking riot. Peace.